Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. My name is Janice Monaco. I reside at 3744 Ramila Run Drive, El Paso. I'm also here to speak about the animal shelter, and I will reiterate some things that have already been mentioned. We need to discuss the budget for the expansion of the shelter. What is the exact dollar amount? I've heard it's between five and ten million dollars. Where are the plans? Public needs access to these plans as well as to all the bids. <coughs> Who's bidding? How much are the bids? We need to see a detailed project description. What services will be provided? Terms and conditions and estimated timeline. The total dollar amount needs to be approved at the onset, not in phases, just for a nicer building to kill animals in. We need a public discussion to be part of the meeting and have a vote to approve the total. Way too many animals are killed needlessly. A new building will not fix the real problem overpopulation. A good percentage of the budget needs to go to stay in the programs, including education. What percentage of the current budget goes to this program? If not there, where does the money go? What is the percentage going to actual animal cost versus personnel? How many spay and neuters are performed annually? No animal should leave the shelter without being sterilized. If the animal is too young, then new owners would leave a bond included in the adoption fees to come back for spay and neutering on the age. Spay and neutering is the only alternative to euthanasia. Thomas Mill and Quitman are two communities nearby with no kill shelters. Why can't Lawrence County join them? I've heard some have told me that people on this panel say that the animal activists and rescuers want no animal euthanized. That's factually incorrect. Just for clarification, a no kill shelter still allows euthanasia at an owner's request 10% of the animals intake can still be killed and still be considered no kill. The 10% would be animals that are too ill to save or verified aggressiveness in an animal. No kill would provide thousands of animals a second chance to those in need until a home can be found for them. I emailed Linda Patelski, director of Lowe's County Animal Shelter, a link to the animal shelter from the town in New York where we lived, or Cape and Animal Shelter. Brookhaven's focus is on reducing the population to prevent euthanasia. Some items of their services are a pet food pantry to assist struggling families to keep their pets. Employees work 43 and a half hours. The hours are Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 30, Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free feral cat pet for spay and neuter. Free adoptions for pets over five years old. All adopted animals receive a three in one vaccine, including rabies and on Intake over provision is 24 7. In another shelter nearby, adoption fees are waived for seniors, veterans, physically challenged, volunteer firefighters, and auxiliary police officers. In Brookhaven, animal control works closely with the police department, carrying a microchip scanner on the truck, patrolling streets and neighborhoods with high levels of complaints and prior issues. Do I always do any of this? I've heard horror stories about animal control officers here not responding to calls or telling citizens to shoot loose and lonely animals. Maybe we need re-education of animal control. Any animals picked up by them must be spayed, neutered before releasing to the owner, as well as vaccinated. All of this brings us back to the budget, the current budget and the millions of dollars budgeted for the expansion of the existing building. What is the total? Where are the plans? Where are the bids? What percentage will be used towards reducing overpopulation? Once again, a new building will not help the true problem, overpopulation and needless killing of animals. Thank you. Thank you, Monica.